Hello, I'm Dr. Christopher Ashley, and I'm one of the scientists behind the Astrea One filtering water bottle. Over the past several years, I've been studying the issue of lead in our drinking water and the variety of techniques to address this serious issue. Today, I'm going to answer some of the more common questions about lead and how it ends up in our drinking water. I think the most common question is, how does lead end up in drinking water? And that's because the vast majority of us in the US get our water from a municipal treatment facility. So whether you're getting a glass of water from your kitchen sink, from the water fountain at the gym, or from a water fountain in a school, that water has already undergone a treatment process, and one would assume that part of that process is removing lead and other contaminants. That is a safe assumption. The Environmental Protection Agency regulates the water that comes out of treatment facilities, and as it leaves, it must be below 15 parts per billion lead, and in the majority of the cases, the lead is in non-detectable limits when it leaves. So this leads to the next question then, how come we keep seeing all of these news stories where someone measures water from their kitchen tap, or from a school, or from a playground, and determine lead levels significantly higher than 15 parts per billion, sometimes in the 60 or 70 part per billion range. Well, the underlying cause is the distribution line, the pipes that carry the water from the treatment facility to that particular tap. In the US, we've got millions of miles of these distribution pipes carrying water through towns and cities and office buildings and schools. And a lot of that infrastructure was put in place prior to 1960, which was when we stopped using lead piping. Even after 1960, we continued to use materials like solder and joining agents for plumbing that contained lead. And so the only truly effective way to ensure all of our drinking water is lead free would be to tear out all of those million miles of pipe and replace them which would be a tremendously costly endeavor and would disrupt transportation and numerous other activities in cities and across the country. For the longest time, the biggest concern with lead exposure was with young children. And in fact, this is a very serious issue because when young children are exposed to lead, it leads to a lot of physiological impairments. You can have IQ, impairments, you can have physiological development impairments, and you can have hearing impairments in small children. That being said, concentrations of lead in adult bloodstreams that are at the same level as those children can start leading to serious health issues as well. You start ending up with things like hypertension or adult hearing loss. As the lead level in the blood increases, more serious effects become pronounced anemia can develop, infertility can develop, and in fact, higher levels of lead in anyone's blood, whether small child or adult, can lead to heart failure and ultimately death, which is why we have to be concerned with any level of lead exposure. It's all tied to the chemical nature of lead. I'm sure all of us are aware with what happens when you put something like table salt or sugar into a cup of water. You can stir it around a few times, and in a very short amount of time, it completely dissolves. That's actually the case for lead under very specific conditions of the water. However, tiny changes to anything in the water system can cause lead to shift from a fully dissolved state to one where there are particulates of lead. So things like temperature changes, or other salts being present, or pH fluctuations, or seasonality can cause the chemistry of water to change. So instead of having one form of lead, you actually have a mixture of sometimes two or three forms of lead in the water, which makes it incredibly challenging to have one system to remove it. In fact, in order to address this, the National Sanitation Foundation, or NSF International, is a regulating body uh, they spent years developing a test, it's called NSF 53, and it's for contaminants like lead. And what they chose to do with this test was design it so that it took into account the extremes that you could see as far as lead in water. So it covers a range of pHs, it covers specific temperatures, and the intent of this test is to ensure that 
across a spectrum of water conditions, the filter is actually going to continue to remove the contaminants it says it does. Now, a follow-up to that would be, what about these products that have a 99.9% .9 reduction? That very well may get the lead concentration below 15 parts per billion or 10 parts per billion, but there's no way to know just by having that number on the box. The NSF53 protocol has a specified concentration of lead. It starts at 150 parts per billion, which is 10 times the EPA limit. And it requires that the filter reduce it below 10 parts per billion, which is lower than the EPA limit. By just putting a percentage on a box, you're not getting a full picture of what pH the water was tested at, what the starting concentration of lead was, and what the resulting concentration is. And so the only way to truly test water at the tap and to be sure that your water is safe from a tap is to use something with an NSF 53 certification. We spent years developing this technology in our laboratory using a variety of different media chosen specifically to remove lead and other contaminants. Once we were satisfied with its performance in our own lab tests, we sent it to third-party independent laboratories to verify all of our data so that we were confident that the media would achieve the levels of lead and other contaminant reduction that we desired. Another unique aspect of the Astrea One filtering water bottle is that you can take it with you everywhere you go. There are plenty of products you can use to filter water in your home, but we recognized that the risk of lead exposure was also in schools, playgrounds, older buildings, airports, and countless other locations. We wanted to develop a product that would ensure that everywhere you go, your drinking water will have lead levels below the EPA and NSF limits. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned more about how lead gets into your water and the importance of having an NSF 53 certified product. Astrea. Water without questions.